Let's give her another big hand. So beautiful. Well, girls, I'm telling you, we have had an absolutely amazing, amazing time together. And I am just blown away. I mean, I'd love to just talk about what each of them said, but I know y'all want to get out for some lunch at some point. So I just want to wrap this thing up tonight. But um, I I just loved um, how Dr. Leaf did talk about and, and Pastor Wendy just that God does all these beautiful things in our hearts and in our lives, doesn't he? So that we can carry on what he's caused, he's, he's wanting us to do. And that is to live for a cause that is greater than ourselves. And I love this song that they just sung. It's, it's a song that is ministered so deeply to me. You know, it, I love the words of this song. It says, in the shadow of the steeple, that's here in the church. Okay, there are people who have lost their way. Is there anyone that's going to be there to tell them that Jesus is the way and show them the face of Jesus? It, it, will there be anybody that will do that? And the bottom line is, is that we are the ones. We're the ones to be Jesus and to show this world how, how much Jesus loves them. And I know that song was written by a dear friend of mine, Jennifer Crow. She's been here to teach a little bit. But anyway, Mark and Jennifer Crow have partnered with us and, and been such just bosom friends, honestly, through thick and thin. And um, she had actually, she wrote that song after this dream that she had about a place called Lesotho. And it's, it's a place in South Africa that she had never heard of. She had a dream, literally, and the word Lesotho was spelled in the sky across the clouds. And she had never heard of it, had no clue, just minding her own business, walking throughout life. And she woke up, and she wrote it down so she wouldn't forget about it. And then throughout the dream, um, she saw all these black seals in this dream, little baby seals and, and all kinds of age seals and and there was a big mama seal and she was uh, turned into a beautiful african woman and in the dream and there were these babies just spill spilling out of her pouch and some of them were healthy and some of them were bloodied and and dying and this woman said in her dream will you help me will you help us it was just a cry of this woman's heart and she woke up from the dream she went and um, she looked it up on the internet and found out it was a country. She didn't even know what the word was. You know, she didn't have any idea. I mean, who, who, you know, who does that happen to? I mean, you've got to know God's in this. And from that moment on, um, she began to have this heart for reaching out to that nation, to that country. And, and now they have this big, um, ministry called the Beautiful Dream Society where they actually go and they help these people. And, and, and these people are beautiful, but there are many women that are trafficked out of that area. And now they have this safe house where they retrain these women. And I'm just telling you that God is going to put a dream in your heart. God has something on the inside of you that stirs you, that frustrates you, that gets you excited, that gets your goat, so to speak. And and, and it just impassions you. And usually that tells you that God wants you to be a part of something that is bigger than yourself, something that will get you out of your own misery, out of your own pain, out of your own heartache, and help you to live beyond yourself for the cause of Christ. And that's just her story. And um, anyway, for me, of course, you know, after our son Caleb went to heaven, I can't help myself. I can't help myself but reach out and share with other women and other families who are going through the loss of a loved one that God really cares and that God will comfort and God will bring healing and God will strengthen them and help them and, and to continue on. And so anyhow, whatever it is, but God always has a purpose in our lives in mind from the moment we were born something he specifically designed us for to live out on this planet a cause to live for that's greater than ourselves you see from the very beginning of time god called us or god has been telling a story i mean it's called history right his story and we're a part of this big epic story in life we're just in this one little time slot and we have to do our part well so that the next generation will carry on the cause of christ and do their part well and the generation after generation will carry on the cause of christ 
And there are a few things that might help us to understand if we're going to continue to be a part of this epic story, this romance that God has been telling from the beginning of time. And one of the things, one of the thoughts is that things are not always as they seem. We sometimes do not realize that things are much more than what they seem. You see, what might have happened if Eve would have really recognized the serpent for who he really was? Maybe we wouldn't even be here in this fallen world right now. What would be different possibly in our world if the people in that era of time had recognized Jesus for who he really was and accepted him? Of course, we know from the beginning of time, Jesus said, I'm going to lay down my life. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But sometimes things aren't as they seem. And we need to pray for an awareness that God will begin to open up our eyes to see the times that we're living in as they are, that we will take seriously this place in time that God has placed us in. See, we live in a world that has two realities at all times. And I've lived in this even more dramatically since our loss of Caleb. Because we live in a world that's very present and real where our five physical senses are being entertained all the time and stimulated and dealt with. But at the same time, we live in a spiritual world where things are different than what they are on this world. And we want to see the two come together where heaven is touching earth, where heaven and earth come together. And we begin to bring God's strength and God's beauty and God's healing to this, this world that we live in. We need to pray that God opens up our, our eyes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 18 in the NIV, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is un, on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. And it is a learned... Somebody finished my sentence. I can't say it skill. We have to learn how to do this. It's not an easy thing. We are so sucked into our everyday lives and we have to pray, God, help me to be aware that I'm not just living right now, even though God wants us to live in the moment, enjoying our lives. But at the same time, he wants us to recognize that he has something greater, a bigger purpose, a bigger plan that he wants us to be a part of. And that leads me to the second point, And that is that we need to recognize that we really are in a battle. We're in a war and there is an enemy. His name is Satan. He is out to kill, steal and destroy our lives. And these women have beautifully illustrated that throughout this journey, that there is always a battle going on around us. And we need to recognize that there is no more time left. Okay. We need to take seriously the days that we are in. And if you just want to recognize what the enemy has done, all you have to do is look around. It's very easy to see. You know, there are broken hearts and broken lives and broken homes. There is poverty and sickness and disease that is rampant and killing people by the millions around our world. There is all kinds of, of human trafficking and people that are enslaved still today. There is a battle that is taking place. You know, there's lost souls. I mean, just millions of people that don't know about God's love, this love that we've been experiencing. It's been so sweet, hasn't it? The sweetness of God has been here helping us to recognize he loves us so much. But girls, because he loves us so much, can we keep it on the inside? I say there is no way. We have got to get out of the walls of this church and we've got to continue to recognize that there is something that we need to do a part that we need to play because we're in a very real battle for the hearts and the souls of mankind along with God. And we're, we're all he's got. And that's the third thing I want you to remember as we're a part of this big story is that we really do have a crucial role to play. And we've talked and talked about this, but God has created us as women. There are only two you know, male and female. Okay, well, if you're a female, then God has created you with this amazing ability to nurture. He has strategically made you a woman. 
to love and to care for and to bless and to nurture and to love. Women love so well. God has created us with a purpose and a destiny to live out, a cause to live for that's greater than ourselves. And every one of us need to play our part well. And just like Wendy said, we might be a voice, we might be a tongue or whatever our role is, but every single person has a role. You need to open up your mouth and tell your story. You need to tell other people people what have gotten you through the situations and the circumstances that you've gone through, but your role is vital. We all have a crucial role to play. See, if we don't recognize how, it, how important our role is as individuals, literally hundreds, thousands, who knows, for generations to come may not be reached for the cause of Christ. It's very important that we don't underestimate who we are. I'm kind of a Lord of the Rings fan and, and, you know, I love all those kinds of movies. And anyway, you know, Frodo Baggins, he was like the chosen one, but he didn't have any idea. Okay. He underestimated who he was. You know, Peter, James, and John, and many people in the New Testament, they had no idea the role that God really had for them to play. But the Bible says they turned the world upside down. Okay, the, the thinking, everything, because they followed Jesus in the role, they finally got it and recognized that their part was crucial. It was important. And we as God's daughters and his girls are strategically positioned to really wreak havoc on the enemy. Amen. And he wants us to bring healing and hope and beauty into this world. Positive change. Amen. And so, you know, I love what Dr. Leaf was saying. She was talking to some of us yesterday too and talking about how God wired our brains to bring that to other people. Okay. And so as God heals us, when we do that for other people, Actually, it's just how we're wired to, to do it. God created us that way. So you know what? You're just a little machine out there of love, of, of bringing goodness and God to the world. You know, this story started a very, very long time ago, back from the very, very beginning. And um, we've now really reached this moment in time where it is our time, our turn to rise and to shine. This is your moment to shine. Amen. That's what our conference is called. You know, years ago, God gave, actually put in my heart this word shine because I really felt very depressed and oppressed in my mind. And I thought, I don't want to be that way. I want to be full of joy. I want to shine. Like the Bible says in this dark world as a bright star, let people see Jesus so that he, they can come to know him too. And I believe today, if we'll just recognize and embrace this beautiful position that God has given to us. It's so strategic. And just don't, don't give up on what God has called you to do. We really need to rise up and, and fight for the hearts of others. You know, the Bible says, I love this verse. It's in the Message Bible. Romans 1 verse 5. It says, through him, we received both the generous gift of his life and the urgent task of passing it on to others who will receive it by entering into obedience trust in Jesus. So see, God has given us this beautiful gift. Like we've been sharing this whole time, receiving his love, connecting with him, staying in community with other, getting more healing and, and just loving on each other so that we can pass it on so that we can give it away. And we've got a job to do in this part to play. There's an urgent task that the God, that this God has given to us to give it to others. So we've got to join him in this task, okay, in rallying with the God of the universe to really fight for the battle that's going on in this present earth, right? So that we can bring as many people to heaven with us. And, you know, that manifests itself in all kinds of different ways. And, you know, there are, are wonderful things, wonderful causes that God has given to us to partner with um, in order um, to see his kingdom move forward across the earth in so many different dimensions as probably as many people as there are here just about there are things that we can do to bring hope and bring life and to bring ministry and sometimes that takes some sacrifice to bring heaven to earth but God has in, has empowered us and equipped us and God is calling us to move forward with that and you know what we don't have to lose heart because the good news is, is that God's going to keep, like Wendy said, walking with us along this journey 
God's going to keep healing us and helping us to renew our minds. We're going to get stronger. We're going to get more bold. We're going to be more healed. And, and it's just going to go from glory to glory in our lives, ultimately culminating in this beautiful, epic love story ending of a happily ever after, isn't it? Because the Bible tells us one day we will be with Jesus forever. I love that precious little girl who started that, that prayer. I didn't have any idea what she was going to pray, but that is our ending. And that's the ending for people that that's the ending we want for people. We want them to live happily ever after as well. And so even though we know that's our end story because we are know that settled, there's still a huge job to do. And there are thousands and thousands of lives that need to be told this magnificent story of his love. And the only way they're going to hear it is through us. And so that is why each of us have such a vital role to play. And you know, it, it sounds kind of fun and epic and because I, I love love stories. You know, I love these happily ever after stories. I don't even like to see anything that doesn't live happily ever after. Some of those European films, man, I just want to smack them. They just, they kill people in the end. What's up with that? But anyway, I, I just, <laughs> I just want things to be good for everybody, not just us. Amen. We can't keep it on the inside of us. And, and it's nice, it's a nice, sweet little story to feel like we're part of this big, beautiful, romantic, poetic, beautiful story that's going on. But you know what? If you're like me, you live in an everyday world where thoughts still bombard your mind on an ongoing basis. You know, this morning I got a call from a, my best friend and she was leaving a message. She was heading out of town to be with her, her daughter. And she said, you know, I'm on my way to see my beautiful daughter um, it's her birthday and, you know, it's her middle child. You know, Caleb's my middle child. I'm sorry. The thought just still hits my head. I wish it wouldn't. I can't help it. But this is the real world that we live in. We live in a drama filled world. I mean, I got a teenage daughter. She's 17. And I'm telling you, I get sucked into her drama as much as she does, man. I'm about to kill guys all the time and friends and everything else. That mama bear, you know, just rising up. And then now I got a son that's 22. He has drama too. And I, same thing. I get sucked right into it with him. And I got a husband, you know, he's not too dramatic most of the time, unless I create it for him and which I do quite frequently. <laughs> and so got just a little bit of drama there, but anyways, and, um, of course missing Caleb, but you know, we live in a very real n normal world. You're going to go have to go home. And I'm telling you, doggone it, there's probably going to be some dishes in that <laughs> sink. And probably those men did not do a darn thing, you know, while you were gone. I mean, it's just the way it is because they're focused. They're single focus. They can only do one thing. At least they took care of the kids or whatever, you know. But anyway... And I'm saying all that just to say that I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that I have a purpose, that I have a part to play, that I have a role, that I have a cause to live for that's greater than myself, that can suck me right out of that pain and that difficulty that I am walking through in that moment that God knows that I need it because it's what keeps me going. See, I could just cry one second ago, but now I'm all excited again. <laughs> <laughs> because you're all still here and I have a purpose. I have something I'm supposed to be doing right now. So that's about how it works, isn't it? I mean, we're sucked in one second and then we're recognizing God really has something for us to do, to be a part of his plan of calling, of, of seeing his cause move forward. And I call it that the cause kicks in. I shared about this on this past Sunday, but something should happen on the inside of us when drama is taking place. And yet we begin to recognize and be aware that it's not about all our little world and all our little thoughts and our little brain, but there really is a bigger plan. There really is a bigger world. There really is a battle to fight. There really is a part for us to play. The cause ought to kick in. You know, I was talking the other day with, I was actually feeling a little bit sad and, and I, I walked into a situation where pastor Anita was back there talking to some, uh, a woman in our, in our church or her son was in our church. And um, unfortunately, it just um, committed suicide and she was just ministering beautifully and talking to them. And I saw that woman. I'm telling you, just nothing but compassion just could rise in my heart. And it just pulls me right out of my pain, just pulls me right out of myself. It helps me to recognize that there are other people in the middle of their pain and I can bring courage and I can bring strength and I can do my part to help them and lift them and encourage them. See, the cause kicked in. 
That's what should happen on the inside of us because God has redeemed us and healed us. Let's let the cause kick in. I'm telling you girls, this is our moment to shine. It really is for the cause of Christ. And so practically, I just want to quickly say how that is outlived in our lives is just really on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's mostly the people around you. You don't have to think too hard or look too far to find somebody that is going through something difficult. Just get out of yourself and reach out to them. It could be your child or your spouse. It could be just the neighbor or the friends around you, your coworkers or whatever it is, somebody that Jesus brings across your pathway. This one sweet girl, she wrote me, she said, I think maybe you're supposed to share this at Shine and I'm just doing it because I want to encourage her to let her know that God can speak to her heart. And you've probably heard this little phrase before, but she said this, remind them that the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus they see in you and me. And that's absolutely true. True. We are God's hands and his feet and his voice of encouragement. Whatever it is, let's just be Jesus to people. Let's just reach out. You know, I was, um, um, Oh, I was reading the story of the Good Samaritan recently and uh, in Matthew 10, and it talks about how, or excuse me, Luke 10, and it talks about how, you know, Jesus was saying, you know, love your neighbors, you love yourself, love God with all your heart and love your neighbors, you love yourself. And some religious people were getting all upset about it. Well, who is my neighbor, you know, and trying to trap him and all of that. And Jesus basically bottom lined it and said, you know what? Your neighbor's basically anybody who has a need. Okay. All these religious people and people passed by this guy who was left for dead on the side of the road, but the one who stopped and helped him, that was the neighbor. See anybody who's in need, Okay, that's who our neighbor is. That's the one that we need to help. And, and it's just easy to find whether it's these people around us or it might be people who have no voice. They have nobody to stand up for them. They have nobody to lend them strength. They have nobody. Like these women that are being trafficked with A21. Like some of these kids that are being taken from their homes or sold by their parents into slave labor. I mean, there are people all around us, around this world. Even in Austin, I was watching two nights ago and they just arrested a guy who had, I can't remember, was it 10 women or girls in an, a, you know, a building just down south because he was trafficking them. It's ridiculous. It's right here in our own hometown and it's everywhere. There are people that don't have a voice and we have to begin to expand our hearts and our arms and our vision beyond just even the few people around us, but, but expand bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes it's like Wendy said, we have to get up a little bit higher and we have to allow God to heal us a little bit more and get out of ourselves and say, God, help me to see larger. Help me to expand bigger, you know? Our hearts have been so expanded. You know what? I don't wish this was my story, but because of the pain that I have experienced in my life, I've had to expand. All of a sudden, now I have a lot of people in my world that are walking through the same kind of loss that I am, that it's made my heart expand and love them too and, and, and want to wrap my arms around them a little bit more. And so God is going to ask you to expand. In fact, that was one of the words that I felt like God put in our hearts for this conference was that we need to expand so that we can see the cause of Christ go forward a little bit more. And I love that Pastor Wendy had all of you stand up that might want to be a part of Shine. I believe that God wants to do incredible things. There ought to be every woman in our city at this conference. I mean, women's lives need to change. Women's lives need to get healed. But the only way we can do that is we have bigger, we have more, we have people that can come in. And so thank you for volunteering because I believe God's causing you to expand. Anyway, and um, I'm so proud of our church family. You've expanded in so many ways, you know, um, and, and, and this community, you know, um, the um, uh, Lisa was sharing at our little um, pastors gathering we had a couple of days ago about how there are some teen pregnant girls in, in our community that we're reaching out to now. Um, we were talking, there was some different women all around our community that were there just I mean, blew my mind. St. Louis House. These are uh, a group of women that help these single moms really get permanent housing and help them. They've been homeless or they've been incarcerated and now they're just got their little families and they don't know what to do. Helping them. See, we've got to expand. You know, Monas de Cristo, we help them with backpacks. We need to expand. There was Capital Area Food Bank helping the people around our community that don't have, doesn't have food. Austin Pregnancy Resource Center, Family Elder 
elder care, helping with the elderly. There are so many ways we can expand our hearts to reach out to people that simply need to be helped. God is calling us to expand our hearts and, and, and our, and our lives. And, um, you know, one of the ways that we're also expanding, of course, is through the, um, Caleb foundation projects. And again, it's not a way I wish that my heart would have to expand. I wish we could just expand it some other way. Okay. But this is how God is redeeming and bringing beauty out of ashes. And the Caleb foundation projects are really just reaching out to, uh, you know, less fortunate people all over the world and a lot of orphans. And we now have four situations taking place. We have, um, the Caleb house, um, in Botswana. It's called Caleb Place. And I have a screen. I don't know if they've got it here somewhere. Okay. I wanted to just show you some of these different things. The, um, these are some of the babies. This was a baby dedication that they just had in Botswana, Africa. Some of these little kids that you see the cutest kids you've ever seen in your life. Look at that little sassy boy right there. I don't know. And that little girl. I mean, these are just babies, kids that are now orphans that are now going to be raised in an environment of love and, and knowing God. And, um, we'll get to be a part of, we'll get to be a part of their lives, um, for eternity. Um, this little group down here, that's all splashing around and stuff. That's the Caleb, um, club in Poland. And every single week I told you yesterday, they, they feed these kids and teach them the word of God all day on Saturday and just love on them to less fortunate kids. Um, this right behind here, the big dome, you can kind of see it where it says cause that is the Caleb, um, Caleb place in Botswana. It's actually almost done. We're going to go in September and do a ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm so excited about that. And then here's the Haiti Pete kids. Of course, Caleb, we will run our race. She got them together. And, um, you saw yesterday the buildings that are going up. And so we're just, you know, blessed and privileged and, and honored to be able to be a part of this, but it causes our hearts to expand. We didn't know these people before, but now they're a part of our hearts. They're part of our families. Our hearts are expanding, um, to reach out and to touch more and more people. And of course, pastor just got back from South Africa and now I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. Okay. There's going to be Caleb house, um, South Africa or Cape town. I don't know what we'll call it exactly. And actually we're going to build a church there. So we're going to have a shoreline Cape town or whatever is going to be called. It's just expansion. My heart is expanding so much. It's like ridiculous. I can't, I can't even keep up with it sometimes. Um, all these different things that God is asking us to do. And, you know, as a church family, you know, we've been expanding as, as we've, um, expanded to the South and we've expanded now out West and, and now Dallas. I mean, it's just expanding and, and next year, girls shine. This is so exciting. We're going to have a shoreline. I mean, a shine Dallas night. We're just going to do a one night mini conference after shine, regular shine. We're going to run down there Sunday night. Y'all want to come join us? Just come hang out. But anyway, we're going to come, go down to up to Dallas, excuse me, and have a shine Dallas. And then also in September, we're going to Poland. Love you, Asha, if you're watching. And, um, we're going to have a shine Poland. So isn't that exciting? See, God is asking us to expand, to share his love in every way that we possibly can, to embrace the hurting and destitute. And it's only because he loves people so much and because he loves people. It makes us love people. And we just want to keep expanding. It's not easy for me at times, like I said, but but God wants us. It's the only way, girls. It's not going to cut it anymore for us to just stay in our little group of people. We have to continue to ask God to help us expand. That's the only way, honestly, that we're going to continue to be filled with the joy and moving forward and, and have this life, um, to live for a cause that's greater than ourselves. And, um, you know, the way I like to say it is that the greatest use of our lives is really lives spent living for a cause that will outlast our lives. And, and so we just need to ask God to expand us, to make us more aware to live for this beautiful, beautiful cause. Amen. Amen. If you would just bow your heads for a moment and let's just pray for a second. Father, I thank you this morning, God, for all that you've done in our hearts. God, our minds are so full. Father, our hearts are so full. Father, of all that you've taught us and gosh, we have so much more to learn and Father, to even sit down and think through some of these things to apply it to our lives and 
Father, I just want to ask that you would transform us, Father, helping us, Father, to walk from this, this place, Father, this, this um, weekend. Father, taking all that we've, we've learned, Father, all that you've, you've done in our hearts, God, as we've connected with you. And Father, we continue to live in this love relationship with you, Father, day by day. Father, so that no matter what's taking place, God, we know we have you walking with us. Father, and as well, we have each other. Father, help us to just link arms a little bit more. Father, we wouldn't be afraid to connect in community with one another. Father, we all need our sisters and brothers in Christ, God, to walk with us through this life. Father, so that we can be stronger together. Father, when we're linked together, we're stronger. Father, we can make it. Father, we, we're carried. Father, we, we grow and we recognize it's going to be okay. And as well, Father, that you would help us to continue, Father, to purpose in our hearts. Father, to live for a cause that's greater than ourselves. Father, that would help us, Father, to continue, Father, to see great things happen for your kingdom. Father, we know that you love people, Father, so very much. And we just want to do our part well. Help us, God, to partner with you in that. So, Father, we just worship you and we praise you. And thank you for everything done. Father, I just, I just ask that you would seal it in our hearts. Um, Father, and just bring back to us the things that we need to remember. Father, the things that we need to continue to um, live out and walk out and, and maybe study a little bit more deeply. Father, bless Pastor Wendy and Dr. Caroline Leaf. Father, as they go from this place, Father, multiply back to them for sowing seeds, Father, of health and life and, and love, Father, and wisdom, Father, into this group of women. Father, I ask that you bless their lives. You continue to anoint them. Father, you would continue to expand their ministries. Father, their influence. Father, that you would use them to the greatest possible capacity that they could possibly use be used until the day they go to be with you. Father, I thank you. Father, that you join lives with them. Father, divine connections. Lord, for your purposes, Father, for your glory. Father, that you would be made more famous every single day of our lives. Father, we love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, tonight, or tonight, feels like tonight. Today, we just want to end our little time together as we always do with a little bit of a little ceremony feel. And um, we're going to have um, the band come and play. And we're going to just worship, end worshiping God, getting back to this place of saying, God, Everything that I've learned, everything that you've done in my heart and life, I'm entrusting to you. I'm, I'm giving it to you so that you can help me to live out each part of it as you want me to. And as we do that, what, what we're going to do is, you know, we always like to give you a little memento of the conference. And so we came up with just this idea because we had a party for a cause. We always want to be about going beyond ourselves. And so we've got these little spoons, wooden spoons. I had no idea Pastor Preet is going to preach about that stupid wooden spoon. has nothing to do with it, okay? Y'all need to get that CD if you weren't here. But anyway, it says, Connect Community and Cause, written on it, okay, engraved on it. And that spoon's for you to keep. But we also have a soup. We call it the friendship soup um, with it. And it's got a little recipe card. You can make up your own recipe if you don't like our recipe. Do whatever you want to. It's a mixture of beans, okay? It's a bean soup. You can add chicken, fish beef, whatever you want to do with it. Okay. But anyway, and, um, we, the idea behind it is just for you to come up with a way to, or to pray for somebody that you would like to give this friendship to a soup to that you would make it with tender, loving care. Somebody you might want to reach out to somebody that's just driving you crazy. It might be a teacher, a single mom, an elderly person, somebody that you want to reach out to for the cause of Christ. And then you can make that, add your own little touches to it, or just put a sweet note of encouragement, whatever you want to do, and bring that to them sometime. Let's just make a goal, okay, that it happens before 
uh, you know, Christmas because then you'll forget about it, okay? You get too much stuff going on. Maybe a couple of you can go together. Whatever you want to do, bring it over to a family. But we just want to encourage you to do it. So ushers are going to guide you row by row up here, and you can just take one of your soups and um, keep your spoon for your own self, okay? So you knock your husband over the head with it or whatever you want to do. No. Anyway. We just love you, love you so much. Um, Just enjoy your time, just continuing to, again, commit this time to the Lord. Let's worship Him and enjoy this moment.